Hi, hello, and welcome in our video. In this video, we will be talking about RECIF. RECIF, or Requirements Interchange Format Files, are XML files that you can use to exchange requirement and associated metadata between requirements tools or requirements repositories. RECIF, together with Excel, are two options you can use when you need to round trip your requirements. That means that you will export your requirements, change it, import it back, and propagate those changes to your source requirements. Both options has their pros and cons. For example, you can use RECIF import and export to exchange requirements artifacts and associated metadata between software tools, including IBM Doors Next, IBM Doors, or any other tool that supports RECIF specification. So we have in this one sentence potential pros and cons right away. For example, pro may be that you can also export metadata, for example, type system, while in Excel you are not able to export type system. But Excel is a very popular tool, so you don't need to any specialized tool to work with your exported requirement or to change your exported requirement. While with RECIF you need specialized tools, so you need some application that can read RECIF change RECIF and export RECIF. So, as I mentioned, you can import and export data to and from requirements project or component by using RECIF. And if you are importing back data that was changed, then this data is merged and updated. In this video, I will show you how can you import and export RECIF files, as well as I mentioned some similarities and differences between RECIF and Excel. Great, and because this is highly hands-on topic, without any further ado, let's jump directly to the exercises. When using RECIF, we cannot jump directly to file or to base artifacts, to view or to modules and create RECIF there. No, we need to go up here to Settings and Manage Component Properties. And here in Component Properties, in a special section for RECIF, we need to create RECIF definition. To create definition, you need to click on the new definition, give this definition some name, for example, R1. You can choose if you would like to include the links, folders, and tags. Now they are selected, but they don't have to be selected. I will use them all. Then you can choose views for this RECI file, or you can, for example, add base artifact. So I can navigate and choose any base artifact, for example, this one. And also you can add module. For example, I will use stakeholder requirement specification. Add, close, and now save. All right, so our definition was created. But creating definition is not all. This is just beginning. After you create definition, you need to create recce file. You need to export this definition, and then just after that, your RECIF file will be created. So right now, you just created, what would you like to include in this RECIF file? But your RECIF file is still empty. You don't have any RECIF file, just definition, what is supposed to be in this RECIF file. So to create actual RECIF file with actual data, you need to click on this icon and click on export. Now, you can download this file right away, or you can just close, and you can download this file whenever you want, for example, in a day, in a week, in a month. In this RECIF file, you have frozen configuration of selected modules and artifacts. So any changes after exporting this definition and creating this file are not propagated. It's up to you. When would you like to download this file? I will download it right away. I clicked on this icon and you see my file was downloaded. Also. If you would like to update this file, you don't have to create new definition. You can make your changes and then export this file again. If I made some changes between those file creations, then those changes will be reflected in this new file. Remember, your first file, there is frozen configuration. Although you made some changes, those changes are not propagated to this first file. But after we are creating new file, this is current configuration. So with all changes you made between those RECIF file. All right, so we exported this RECIF file and I can create, for example, some new empty component and use this component to import RECIF file. So this will be training RECIF without any template. 
perfect. And now I can click here, import artifact, and here your options are very simple. You can choose recce file or recce file. Well, basically you are not able to choose anything else because how would you choose Excel or Word if you don't have any type system created? Well, your artifact would be what? So you don't have any type system, therefore you can only use recce file because in recce file you can also have type definition. Not you can also, you have type definition. So what would you like to choose? You can choose recce file and recce file advanced and then basically the same options but those recce files you can browse from your computer and those recce files you can browse from your component. So I would like to use this recce file advanced because in advanced you have all options than in this simple recce file and more and they are not that deep dive so we can choose advanced. Excellent. I will click on next then I will click on browse. I will choose our R1 recce file. Excellent. I will upload it. Perfect. So you see we have here summary. We see that we have one recce file. There is 93 objects. There are 20 data types that we are importing, 81 at attribute definitions, 6 artifact types, 93 artifacts. You see those are those objects and one specification. Excellent. So this you have in advanced import. Next, here you can choose location for new modules or you can use default location. I will use default location. Place new artifacts with no module in hierarchy. Okay, this option is about base artifacts we are including in our recce file. Right now I have one base artifact there. So if I would click here and if I would also have some module or you can create a new module here, then you can choose module where this base artifact can be placed. But I am not able to create any module and I don't have any module yet, so I will not use this option. So it will be just in the file here. Excellent. Then we have this import tagging options. So we can tag artifacts that are present in a repository modules being updated, but are not present in the package. What does it mean? It means that if we have some module already here with some artifacts in it, and we are updating this module, we can tag artifacts that are present in this module, but are not present in this recce file package. Why? Why would you do that? Well, the most common reason for an artifact to be absent in a subsequent import is that this artifact is deleted on the sender side of a recce file. And you need to know that artifacts that are not included in the package but exist in the module structure are never deleted. So you can, for example, tag artifacts that are in a module but not in a recce, and then you will know that those tag artifacts were probably deleted. So you can delete all tag artifacts, for example. So this is useful feature. And last important options are here. So you can allow artifact creation or disallow, allow or disallow artifact move within modules, allow or disallow modification of existing artifact types, and also you can allow modification of existing artifact attributes definition, and allow or disallow modification of existing data types. So this is about artifacts and this is about type system uh, with associated artifacts. Excellent. I will click on next. Here I will choose my stakeholder requirement specification. Next. Here you see those are artifact types and artifact attributes that will be imported here. So stakeholder requirement, information, heading, and hazard and risk and diagrams and sketches. So those are artifact types. And in here are associated artifacts attributes. Excellent. So I will click on finish. Perfect and close. And you see those are base artifact here right away. So I have AMR hazard and risk. So this is the base artifact I choose specifically. And then AMR stakeholder requirements, all base artifacts that are associated with this one module I included. So AMR stakeholder requirement specification. Perfect. And you see 
we not only included module and all artifacts in this module, but we also included type system. So if I will navigate here, you see, although I had empty component right now, I have artifact types here, artifact attributes here, some probably more attribute data types, and probably the same link types because we were using just default ones. And while we are in a component properties, I would like to show you something in Rekif. You see, although we didn't create any Rekif definition, there is some Rekif definition here. Why? Because as we imported this Rekif file, you see, created by import, this Rekif definition was imported also. So you don't have to now create any Rekif definition, all settings, all properties that you choose when creating this relative definition for this import are now here. So you can just navigate to your artifacts if you are doing round trip and you can click on modules. And for example, here you would like to make big change here and delete this change. Excellent. So I can just navigate back to manage component properties, Rekif. I don't need to create any Rekif definition. I will use the same one. I will click on export, download it, perfect, close, and I will navigate back to the source. And here I will click create import artifact. I will use the same advanced, although I will not be using any advanced options. All right, I choose that Rekif definition. I will upload it. I will just use next, next, next. Choose this module, next, finish, close, and I will check if it was changed. So stakeholder requirements, yes. So this change is gone and this change is here. So you see, that was super easy round trip. So. First of all, I created some Rekif definition where I included some base artifact. You can include views there. You can also include modules here and not just one, but multiple modules. Also, your type system is copied. Also, not the whole type system, but associated with your artifact that you are using in your Rekif file. I send it to another component. This may be, for example, your customer or your supplier here. He imported or she imported this Rekif file. While importing this Rekif file, this definition was created automatically. They don't need to do anything, just import those requirements. So they can change those requirements, simply navigate it to the module or to the base artifact, and they can make any change there. Perfect. Then they can navigate back. Don't create any Rekif file, any Rekif definition. They will just click here, export, and download this export and send it to you. So this is a Rekif round trip. Very easy. And once again, I will use that I am already in component properties and I will navigate to artifact types, artifact attributes, and artifact data types. And I need to tell you that although I am not using URIs right now, you should define your components type system, including those URIs for all of the possible properties and their values. So all artifact types, all artifact attributes, and all artifact data types. Because defining URIs is very important. Based on them, application can recognize the same properties, so artifact types, artifact attributes, and data types, and their values and the link types. So if you are exporting and importing on different requirements management instances or in different project and components, then you can avoid creation of duplicate properties. Okay, but I see this video is getting pretty long, but I can tell you, you already know enough information about Rekif, but I would like to show you just one more exercise and I will be clicked, I promise. So I would like to show you that I will create filter, then I will save a view and I will export just this view in Rekif and then I will import this view to some new empty component. Okay, so I can go here and I will create very simple view with priority and with need. Okay, I have some values here. So I will click on filter. I will choose priority. 
and I will tell this filter that I won't see any priority, but this priority needs to exist and also need also needs to exist at and close. Okay, so you see all artifacts that have priority and need at the same time. I will save this view as shared and I will call it for Rekif. Perfect. Now I will navigate back, manage component properties, Rekif. Here I will create new definition R2. I will add module, but here in a module I will click on stakeholder requirements and select this public view for Rekif. Add view, perfect, save. I have my definition and I can click export, download, perfect. And I will create some new empty component so it is very easy to spot the difference. Create excellent import artifact Rekif advanced next browse upload you see just eight artifacts perfect next i will leave everything as default next i will choose this one stakeholder requirement you see just those one perfect finish close and this is our module and you see in this module we have just those artifacts perfect super easy right i can also finish this round trip so you see that it's super easy and I, I am, for example, customer, and right now I would like to have all need as mandatory for every artifact, why not? And priority high, like in every customer situation, everything is super high priority. Save. Perfect, you see, priority high, need mandatory. I can navigate here. I will go to our Rekif definition. Perfect, I will just export it download perfect and i am jumping back to our source so it was my training project and here i will import it back and you see it worked everything is super high priority and everything is mandatory so you can also select subset of your artifacts so for example you can have some enumeration supplier one and you can create filter based on this supplier one and send just this recif file to supplier one then you can have enumeration supplier two and create specific recif for supplier two and those supplier can work on their subsystem or their specific artifact for their small part of requirements so very very easy very useful all right and that was Rekif as fast as possible i really hope this video was informative for you and i look forward to see you in our next videos